Hey guys, Cal here with Precision Rifle Blog, and I'm going to demonstrate a method to precisely measure the distance to touch the lands on your rifle. This is a method that Mark Gordon from Short Action Customs told me about, and I've now used it to measure several barrels for various cartridges from 6mm to 338, and I found it to be repeatable within one thou, which is 0 .001 inches. I've used other methods in the past, including just closing the bolt on a loaded round and seated a bullet incrementally deeper until there was no longer rifling on the bullet. I've also used a Hornady OAL gauge, and while those may be able to get you close to the number, neither method are as precise and are repeatable as what I'm about to show you. In fact, I've repeated the same test back to back, where I ran uh, through this process once and found the right distance to the lands, and then I set that cartridge aside and did the entire process again on the same barrel, and when I finished the second time, I measured both cartridges, the base to ojive distance, and they were identical all the way down to the thousandths place. So this is very precise and repeatable. Now I will say this method is a little bit of a hassle because you have to remove the barrel from the action. If you've never done this before, with the right tools, you can typically do it in under five minutes. So it's not too inconvenient. Okay, step one, you need to resize a case and make sure you size it enough that it drops all the way into the chamber and head spaces on the shoulder without having to apply any additional pressure. It should just drop all the way into place with gravity alone. You can see on this barrel, the case head is about perfectly flush with the barrel. Okay, step two, seat whatever bullet uh, you're, you're wanting to use into the case. I typically start uh, with it a little longer than I, what I know it needs to be. So the cartridge based ojive length uh, is longer than what the distance to the lands is likely gonna be. You can see when I drop this round into the chamber, it sticks up proud. So you see it's above the edges of the barrel. Uh, I can even lightly tap it a few times and it will drop a little closer, but still isn't flush. We know what is keeping the round from going any further is the bullet is seated into the lands. Also, even though I only lightly tap it around in the chamber, it will be difficult to extract because the bullet is engaged in the lands. If I try to remove it with my smallest fingernail, You can see I can't apply enough pressure to extract the round. In fact, if I use one of my bigger fingernails, I can't even extract the round. I keep a pair of tweezers handy and just use them to very lightly pry the round out of the chamber and out it comes. Okay, step three, go back to your reloading press and seat the bullet slightly deeper and then retry. You may have to do that a dozen times, which I've already done for this barrel to save time on the video. You'll eventually notice uh, that the case is getting closer and closer to seating all the way into the chamber like our empty case did. So it won't stick up as proud around the edges of the barrel. Before uh, before I reach that point, uh, I might be making incremental changes of five or 10 thou in seating depth each time. But when it starts to get close, you'll need to start making extremely slight changes in seating depth like one thou each time. Ideally, you'd have a seating die with a micrometer to be able to dial in those small increments in seating depth. Here's an example of a round that is very close to the distance to the lands, but is still a little too long. When I insert the round, lightly tap on it, it goes all the way in, and so it, it is flush like the empty case, but I'm not able to extract the round with very light pressure using only the fingernail on my pinky finger. I might be able to get it out sometimes, but not every time. I can certainly lift it out with uh, one of my bigger fingernails, fairly easy. But it is taking about as much pressure as I can possibly apply with my smallest fingernail. So we know we're close, but that's not quite it. So we'd go seat that bullet one thou deeper and try again. And if you can't remove it with light pressure from your smallest fingernail, you seat it another thou deeper. Okay, now this round is only two thou deeper than the last one I showed. But you can see it goes all the way in with just a little tap. It's flush and I'm able to extract it with just the pressure, very light pressure of my smallest fingernail every time. This round is now my distance to the lands. I'd take my calipers with a bullet comparator on them and measure the distance from the cartridge base to the ojive. 
And that would be my distance to the lands. As I've mentioned, I've found this method to be repeatable within one thou. In fact, I've landed at the same exact measurement when I repeated this, this process on one of my barrels. Once you have the distance to the touch of lands, if you want to do load development with the bullet seated 10 or 20 thou off the lands or into the lands, you would just add or subtract that distance from that baseline distance to the lands that we just measured. On most rifles, this measurement changes by three to 10 thousandths every 100 rounds as the barrel wears and the lands erode. So if precise bullet jump is important to you, you'll likely need to repeat this method periodically and regularly adjust your seating depth to keep the same relative bullet jump to the lands, which is a lot of people call chasing the lands. I'm actually publishing a series of articles right now on some research that was done related to bullet jump, and I'd highly recommend you visit precisionrifleblog.com to check it out. Once again, this is Cal from Precision Rifle Blog. Thanks for watching.